So hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this R for Excel users video, I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table like you do in Excel, like I'm showing on screen, using the R library, pivot table R, and then to export the pivot table into an Excel file using Write Excel. Without further ado, let's head over to R Studio. So here I'm going to create the pivot table using the data set in the description below and the one I've been using in around case data. As in my previous videos, I'm going to be loading in the XLSX file and I'm going to be doing that using the library read Excel. And then I'm going to create a data frame that will store that file into this name. So all you need to do is get the library read Excel and then create the root for where you want to pick up your file. In this instance, I have it in my documents folder. So this is my root. So it knows where the points where it is. So I don't have to put in C drive or anything like that in front. And then I'm using sheet equals data, which is the data sheet in the file. So if I run this, which you can do by highlighting once you've written it out and then click run, you then have your data frame sharp as a table which you can click on to double check that it has all the data, which we can see here. So if we click that off and then we move on to the next part, which is going to be installing the package pivot table R. And all you need to do is type in install packages and then start typing in pivot table R. We'll then run this and it will install the package. So once done, then what we need to do is then load the library for pivot table R. So then you go type in library and then pivot table R in brackets, and then we'll run this. And then that will load in all the back end coding so we can then easily create with just a few lines of code, a pivot table. So the next part is we're going to create the pivot table. Now there are different ways to create pivot tables and I'm using pivot table R in this, but there are ones we can do in other libraries as well. The reason why I chose this one is because it's easier to explain how everything is working without having to go too deep into other packages. I can just keep focused on what we just need to create here is just basically a pivot table. So what this code shows you is that I've created a name for this particular code, just like how we do with the data frames. So then this can be assigned further down in the code. And then we're using the function quick pivot or QPVT as it's called. So how this works is if we type in question mark, and then run, this will give you the help section so you can see what the different parameters are within that particular function. So each part is split by a comma. And what I've done currently is only up until this point. All these additional points are used for formats and styles. But because I'm just creating just a table that we can just export for now, I'm not going to go over the stylings. But if you do want me to cover it in another video, let me know in the comments below. So what we have is the data frame. So we know we want to be able to pull in the data frame that we created, which was in this instance, this one, and then we pull it into here and then we did a comma and then we went to what are we going to call our rows in this case, because we know we want to see it by location, like so we wanted that to be our rows. And then for the columns, we wanted to see it by the different years in the columns. And then I'm going to use years to then in the columns. So then that's why for the rows, location, and then years for the columns, which is here. And then for the calculation, I've used the expression sum new cases. So you get the sum of the cases. Now, if you wanted to count the lines, you could do N in brackets. There's various different ways you can do. You can do the mean, you can do the median. But for now, I'm just going to keep it to just sum. And in later videos, I'll be covering more on mean, medium and count. So now I've covered that part. And what I'm going to do is just remove that. And then I'm just going to run this. Now, when I run it, it won't actually show you the data. If I run it from this point, if I run it from here, the data will show down here. So you get to see what the table looks like. You get to see all the data there. And this is how your pivot table will look. 
So what we need to do next is then convert the pivot, what we've done here into a data frame. Now the way to do this is to then create another variable, which is then going to create its own data frame. And we're going to call it this time data frame, just so then we're keeping it within what we know what this is actually called. And then we've got the part where we're going to be picking what we've called the pivot table, which was called pivot and which is what we got here. And then we use the function as data frame with the brackets. Now, if we view this particular one, you'll see suddenly you'll have a table. However, if we were to export this now, it would only export what we can see in the black parts here. Anything in the sort of the blue, apart from the columns, you will not get this data. It does not show up. So if I show you what this looks like, as you can see, there's no locations. So to get around this problem, what we need to use is a function called cbind. To cbind, you can create columns onto your table, be it on your data set, the pivot table you've created. This is what cbind can help with. And basically, we're just going to call this one export because this is what we're going to use to actually export to Excel. So we're going to give it the export name. And then in the cbind, we're just basically saying we want the row names from the data frame to go in again. So if we were to run this one, you'll see the row names twice, but this time within the darker section. And as you can see here, we've now got them still within the blue section, unlike before. So now we have our pivot table created. What we need to do is export to Excel. So to do this, we're going to be using the installing of the package right Excel, and then we're going to load in the library and then we're going to export. So the first thing you want to do is do install.packages, write Excel. Now I already have this installed, so I'm not going to run it. The next part is you want to load the library and then click run. And then for the actual exporting part, what you'd need to do is type in write underscore Excel SX. And then in brackets, you want to pick what you saved your pivot table data frame as. In this case, we called it export which is the point which we got to here. And then you do a comma and then in quotation marks, we type in the root. Now, because I have a folder in my documents folder called R for Excel users, I have put that in there. And then here is what you want to call your table. So in this instance, I'm going to be going into that folder and then you want two backslashes and then the name you're going to call it. So in here, we'll have an Excel file called R pivot table dot xlsx once we run it so you highlight and then click run then the file pops up here and then we open it up if you file and there we go all exported with all the names and the years as the columns with all the cases summed so if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment like and subscribe and if there's anything you want me to cover next, like I said, if you want me to cover any more where I'm going to go into more detail with the formatting that you can do with pivot tables, or if you want me to cover any other pivot tables using different packages. So, until next time.